Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be talking about a result which is based on group which is unique subgroup of a finite order and that group is actually normal subgroup of that particular group, right? So the result here tells you that if G is some group and it has a unique subgroup which we call by capital H and the order of this subgroup is actually finite, right? In that case, we are sure that this particular subgroup here that is normal in G, right? This is the result. In uh, another way, uh, mathematically, we can express the, this result like this that we say uh, for uh, wherever H is unique subgroup of G which is having finite order then that subgroup is normal in G. So in order to prove this actually we require this part and what does this part tell us? It tells us that if we take H and we construct G H G inverse so basically we are uh, moving in the direction of normal subgroup only. So we first of all prove that this is a subgroup of the given group G. And second thing, the order of this particular subgroup is actually equal to the order of the given subgroup H, right? So in order to prove the result, let's proceed by these two uh, points, right? First of all, we prove the first point where we wanted to prove that G H G inverse is actually a subgroup of the given group G. And second thing here in this point, we wanted to prove that the order of G H G inverse is actually equal to the order of H, right? Where we are keeping this element small g taken from the group as fixed, right? So now in order to show that this G H G inverse is actually a subgroup of G, we first of all show that this contains the identity. It is not the empty uh, subgroup or the empty set. For that, it surely contains the identity. Why? Because you can write the identity as G E G inverse because this uh, and this would again give you the identity. Identity to identity is just the identity, right? And uh, so this identity is taken from H. So this identity, because this element is a member of G A G inverse, therefore identity is also a member of this and hence this is non-empty because it at least contains the identity within it. Now, in order to show that this is a subgroup of G, we will utilize the subgroup criteria. And we will show that if we take any two elements from it, let's say we are taking x from it and we are taking y from it, then we will prove that this element is also present in it, right? So let's consider x and y from uh, this g h g inverse. So it would have a form of this kind g a g inverse and g b g inverse, where what is a and what is b? A is a member of H, B is also a member of H, right? Both X and Y, they are present in G, H, G inverse. So what would be X, Y inverse here? Because X is this G, A, G inverse. Y is this G, B, G inverse. We are taking its inverse. When you take the inverse, all the elements get reversed here. So G inverse inverse would be just G. Then we have, we would have B inverse, right? And then we would have G inverse here, correct? Now we wanted to solve this using associativity. We have this thing and its value is identity. So we have this thing. Now you can clearly see this A, B inverse is some element of the given subgroup H. Why this is so? Because H is a subgroup of G. Hence, we say this complete element is present in G, H, G inverse, right? And uh, if this, all, all of, uh, if this is present in G H G inverse, that means this X Y inverse is also present in G H G inverse. Hence, by the subgroup criteria, this is a subgroup of G. Next thing we wanted to prove here is that the, this order G H G inverse is equal to the order of H. So let's prove this by defining a mapping here. So we de first of all define a mapping and we then will prove that it is a bijection. So that means whatever is the number of elements here, we would have the same number of elements present here because the map is mapping uh, to each element here to 
every element here in a unique way right this is what is a bijection so we first of all define this mapping phi which is defined from the subgroup h to the subgroup g h g inverse and how do we define it we take some element from here let's call it small h and when we apply this mapping phi onto it we would have g h g inverse now notice that this g here is the fixed same element that we define in the starting now clearly this mapping is on to because in order to write any such element we would have to know what is h so that means for every such element we would surely have some h present here so it is on to what about 1 1 for 1 1 we take the images here let's take two images phi of x and phi of y and uh, assume that they are equal now because x and y are arbitrary members so if we prove that their uh, this these two elements x and y are also equal then we would have a one to one correspondence here so by the definition of phi x it is it is equal to g x g inverse and by the definition of phi of y we have g y g inverse here right so on pre multiplying with g inverse and post multiplying with g we would have x is equal to y hence phi is 1 1 it is on 2 therefore it is a bijection if this is a bijection we would have the number of elements um, in both the groups as the same hence because we know its order is n so its order is also n which is given to be finite so this proves our first part here for the second part we wanted to prove we, we are given that h is unique subgroup of g it has order n so now we wanted to prove that it is normal in g now once we have our first result with us we can very easily prove the second part how let's see it because uh, for some g which is a member of the given group we have g h g inverse subgroup of order n we have just proved this thing and moreover in the uh, statement we are given that h is actually a unique subgroup of g so that means uh, if, if we have any other subgroup of this group g then both of them has to be equal this should be equal to h right so this is what we have hence because h is written in this form where g is a member of the given group g therefore h is normal in g and this is what we wanted to prove here okay so in the next video we will be looking at an example which is uh, which will support this result so i hope you understood this result well well that is it for this video thank you for watching